Hello everyone, it's Kathy with Kathy's Candle Creations again. I am going to try to help you today to understand wicks and wick testing some, okay? Um, I'll have to put my glasses on. I put, I made some notes. Um, there are, there are several different thoughts on wick testing. Um, what I will tell you that choosing the right wick it's going to make a world of difference in the candle that you create. Um, reality is a properly wicked candle is safer and it gives the best hot throw as well as the longest burn time. So really, choose, the wick you choose matters. It truly matters. And, and there are different wicks and different types of wicks, different sizes. Um, it can get confusing. So the first thing I'm going to tell you is if when if you're brand new and and you're trying to choose what wick to use, um, go to Candle Science, go to Flaming Candle, go to one of the big candle suppliers. Okay, um, most of them have a wick guide, and what you will what you will do is you'll you'll literally like in a, a little calculator thing punch in the type of wax that you're using, which the type of wax makes the world a difference. You cannot use the same wick that you use in a soy candle in a paraffin candle. It's not going to work the same. So you'll punch in the type of wax you're using and the diameter, which when I talk diameter, I mean the middle of your container, okay, across from one side to the other, from the inside to the inside not the outside from the inside to the inside okay and then different containers have different size di diameters so you're gonna have to go from one side all the way across to the other side and measure to find out what what the um diameter of your container is a lot of uh or you can go to your where you purchased your containers from because most of them list the diameter and the height of what the container is there are some containers this container is a little bit wider at the bottom than it is at the top. So the, the diameter that you're wanting is actually going to be the, the wider diameter. Okay. But each, each container has a different diameter across the top. That is how you gauge where to start with the wick. Um, like, I know what size I use with this one all the time because this is my main container. Um, I know the diameter of it and I know the wick size and the wick types. However, there's a little sneaky thing in there too because what works most of the time doesn't work all of the time because um, of the fragrance oils that I use. Not because I changed my wax up or anything, but Fragrance oils have a different consistency. Some are a little bit thicker than others. So whenever you try a new fragrance oil, you truly need to test a new wick. Um, yes, start with what worked before, but it may not work again. So you may have to wick up or down for a different fragrance oil. So to find it, go to your um, one of the main candle suppliers, go to their wick guide and they will give you two some of them will give you three i think wicks to start with you plug in your type of wax and then you plug in the diameter the diameter is what's going to give you the actual wick size okay so when you purchase your wicks because wick testing is not inexpensive so start with the smaller pack you you can get a big pack i get the big packs because I know um, what what most of my containers use, but if I'm starting with a new container, which I'm doing this week, I'm I'm trying out a different, smaller container than what I'm used to. Um, I got a smaller um, amount of the wicks to test out. Uh, now let's talk about the wicks a little bit, okay? Um, for soy. Because y'all know that this is a soy channel and I, I only use soy. Uh, Eco and CD wicks are by far, to me, the best. Um, but um, if you get an Eco 10 and you have an Eco 
these are Eco 14s. Okay, the 10 is smaller, not in height, but in the diameter, the diameter of the wick. And the 14s are gonna be larger, just as an eight, Eco 8 is gonna be smaller in diameter of the wick than the Eco 10 is. So that's where you look at the, the wick sizes. But um, <clears throat> Ecos and CDs are the best that I have found personally in my years of now doing this um, for soy wax, 464 soy wax, 444 soy wax as well. Um, so, okay, covered that a little bit. So now when, when you're ready and you, you make your candle, um, I'm mainly talking about soy candles, but what I'm about to talk about is for all candles. And what I've just talked about is for all candles. Um, how you can find your the correct wick, or at least a starting point for you to start testing. So, um, what do you test for? Different people test for different things. Okay, me personally, there are four main things I test for. The one, I'm sorry, it's fire safety. It's safety. Um, that is the number one on on my candle making agenda is to produce a safe candle. The second is to produce an awesome candle. Okay, but an awesome candle is a safe candle. So, number one is fire safety. The heat of the container, okay? What what works in one container the is not going to be the same as what works in the other. And the heat, you don't want a glass container to get so hot that it will crack, break, or explode, okay? Yes, explode. Um, so you need to monitor the heat of the glass. A, a glass should be where, where you can touch it, okay? Any glass container should be where you can touch it and you're not burning the skin off your hand, okay? Um, but it still, you should be able to pick it up and move it without hurting your hand either. Um, yes, it should be hot to the touch because guess what? There's a fire in there with a flame that's putting off heat. So it's gonna be hot to the touch, that's okay. You just don't want it to be dangerous to the touch. Um, you don't want, want it, if it's dangerous to the touch, that means this glass is really hot and not safe because uh, the glass could crack or like I said, explode. The same way with a tin. A tin is not gonna react to the, um, the heat the exact same way that the glass will. So you need to be able to touch, touch it and not burn your hand. Um, again, it's gonna be hot because there's a flame in there. There's fire in there and fire makes heat. <laughs> so, so it's gonna be hot to the touch, that's okay but it should be safe to touch. Um, different people are gonna have different tolerances to heat, I am sure. So um, what I consider safe may not be what somebody else considers safe. I can, but you, you, you don't want it to be too hot. I hope you understand that. Um, you can get a digital uh, um, thermal thermometer where you can shoot it at the exterior of your container and check the heat. But the fire safety is the biggest thing to me. So when, when we're covering fire safety and testing, we're also talking about the wicks and, and is the flame flickering a lot? The flame could flicker some and that's, that's okay. You don't want it to flicker all the time a lot, but a little bit of flicker could be coming from a draft in, in where you're testing. Um, uh, and some, some wicks will flicker just a little uh, just because it flickers a little doesn't mean you have to wick down, um, but it's one of the things to think about. So, um, the fire safety and the safety of your candle is the biggest thing for me. Um, the, the next thing you're going to start, start one, wanting to look at is the melt pool. Y'all have heard that. If you, even if you're a beginner, you hear about melt pool. <laughs> so, um, they're different trains of thought on the melt pool. Um, some people want in the first, and a lot of the manufacturers recommend in the first burn that it melts all the way from edge to edge, all the way in in the container, the first burn, and it melts down a quarter of an inch. Okay, that is, yes, that's, that's that works. Um, 
reality is if that's happening um, in too short of a time, you have too large of a wick, okay? So sometimes, especially in glass containers, glass containers react differently than um, the, the tins or the metal containers do. So if I wick this container and it, and it barely melts to the edge, and only gives me a little bit of a, of a depth of wax, I'm not gonna stress over that the first time I burn it, three to four hours, okay? The second time I burn it, I, I really am looking that, that it does get from side to side and that it starts um, giving me a little bit deeper melt pool. If by the third burn, third, that's gonna be, already burned six to eight hours okay so now you're on your third burn if by the third burn it doesn't actually melt the little bit of wax that was sticking to the edges off and start giving you a good melt pool you probably need to wick up but the thing of it is why am i saying to the third burn to, to be sure um because the deeper that you go in the container the more heat that's going to be inside because it's kind of being held, it can't escape as easily. So the, the more heat that's in the container is going to heat up the sides of the container. <laughs> Remember, so you need to get to the third or third test on it anyway, third test burn on it to, to check, really check the sides of your container to see how hot they are. Y'all, I see it in, in so many groups. Y'all do this one test burn, one test burn for four hours, three, four hours, and then you give up. No, 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 no. Sometimes it takes two to three test burns to see if that wick is really going to work for you, okay? So um, when, when it's, give it that, give it a three if it hasn't melted all the way. Um, but if it melts all the way from side to side in the very first burn, be careful because then it may look beautiful, but you may be wicked up too high. Um, somehow you can tell it's a wick too high is the height of the flame um, after about an hour burn, uh, sometimes two hours. Um, you don't want a flame that's really high. You want to keep a moderate size flame. Um, the less flickering is probably the better in a candle. And we're not talking wooden wicks. We're talking wicks right now. Um, cotton wicks for soy, but whatever type of wick you're using for your wax. Um, these are things to look for. Uh, and again, the heat of your container as it burns down. So, uh, the, okay, the flame size is what, what was next that I looked for. The, the, the size of the flame after it's been burning for a while. Um, did the flame get really big or is the flame still a good size? Did it start mushrooming? You know, it, it kind of opens up at the top um, after an hour or two. Um, after you get to the third hour, into the third hour, closer to the fourth hour, if it mushrooms some, I don't stress. Um, a lot of wicks will mushroom a little bit, okay? Uh, so don't go crazy if it's mushroomed a little bit. If you've got a big mushroom on the top, you're wicked up too high. Might as well start over. <laughs> um, so the, the hot throw, everybody thinks the hot throw is the most important. It is in a lot of ways, but the fire safety to me is always gonna be the first most important. So the hot throw, um, I test my containers in my master bathroom, okay? It's about a 10 by 12 room. Uh, no, it's about a, because the master closet's with it too, so it's probably about a 15 by 12 room. I close the bathroom door when I'm testing because when I come back into the master bedroom, I'm hoping that it has slipped under the door some and I can smell it in there. Um, not all of them do. So, um, because different fragrance oils are going to give you, even at the same exact load, they're going to give you a different um, area of hot throw. Uh, so, um, my hope's always that it reaches past the 15 feet and into the next room and I'm smelling it in there. Uh, that's not always the case. I try to make it that way, but there are some fragrance oils 
especially in soy wax that are just going to be a little bit more subtle than um, other fragrance oils. Um, so when do you test? If you're brand new, you test everything you make. Bottom line, testing is expensive, but it also is, is how you find out if you have a quality, safe product. So um, no matter what container you're using, it needs to be a safe product. Um, so, okay, after I have tested and I've got a wick that I feel I think is gonna work, guess what? I recreate. That means I melt, pour, and, and redo another candle. I recreate two more, okay? With that same formula and the same wick that passed the first wick, wick test. Why? Because now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to test, I'm gonna burn that same wick, because now I'm getting double information on it. I'm gonna burn that wick that passed the first go round and make sure that it's working well again. You have to recreate the formula for it to actually be past the test. Um, because one go and one test burn on your, your one candle, is, that's not a test, people. It's not a test. You have to, okay, you don't have to. You can do what you want. But for me and for my belief in fire safety and quality as far as what I'm putting out as a candle, the second time I make my candles, I have two. One, I will burn properly. I burn four hours. Um, if the wick needs trimmed in that time, which in four hours, it really shouldn't unless there's a whip because whips burn differently than a solid candle. Um, I let it burn four hours, uh, blow it out, put it out, trim, uh, trim the wick, <clears throat> get it ready for the next time, and I wait four to five hours until that candle is solid again before I will test it again. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the second time I will test it three to four hours. And this is also how you get your burn time because some, one of the questions your customers are gonna say, well, how long, how long does it burn? Well, if you haven't tested and you don't know, you can't tell them. So I know that my eight ounce tins give me at least 40 hour burn, a 40 hour burn for, it's less than eight ounces, it's seven point something um, for 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 7.7 7 ounces of, of wax, seven something in an eight ounce tin, I get over 40 hours, right around 40 hours for each one of these tins. Um, why do I know that? Because I've test burned them and I've test burned it and I've test burned and I periodically will test burn again. Um, <clears throat> That's how you'll find out your test burn, I mean, your full burn time. So when a customer says, well, how much burn time do I get? You get about 40 hours burn out of that candle. Um, you get about 10 hours burn, you get about 15 hours, you get about 60 hours burn. You know that by testing it properly. So what's the second candle about? <laughs> Excuse me. That's about fire safety too, because that second candle, I'm going to power burn. I'm going to be mean to it. I am going to burn it in a safe place, okay? I normally burn them on a, a plate. Um, but um, I, I will burn it 10, 12 hours. What? No, you're not supposed to burn a candle past four hours. Well, let me tell you people, no matter how much that is on your candle care information, how much it's on the bottom of your candle on your warning label, Many customers are going to burn it way past four hours, all right? Way past. So, I test it that way. Um, I t my tins have all passed my burn time. All right, but a glass at 10 hours is way different heat-wise than what it is at four to six hours. So, I definitely, in all my glass containers, want to know what that heat's getting to because... If somebody's burning a, 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 a little candle like this for 10 hours, and I haven't tested this one yet, I've tested my larger ones, so huh, I'm wondering how this one's gonna do. But um, if they burn it for 10 hours, how hot is that glass? Is, is the glass going to crack because it's gotten so hot at 10 hours, 12 hours? Because people, they will burn them that long. I'm not kidding you. So it needs to be, it needs to be safe. 
So yes, that second candle is all about um, getting, making sure my candle's safe when it's abused, when it's burned improperly, like many candle burners will do. Um, I won't trim the wick. Uh, I wanna see how how big is the wick gonna get. I might trim it once in, in larger vessels. I don't know how to do with the little one, but um, I let the wick go longer than the four hours to see how long the wick is gonna get, how much it's gonna mushroom on top. So with that second candle, I, I abuse it because customers are going to, and I wanna make sure that my candles are safe. I want them to be quality and have an amazing hot throw. Bottom line, that's, that's cold throw sells your candle, hot throw gets your customers to come back. Quality is what, what keeps your customers coming back over and over. So um, it, it needs to be a safe candle. Um, and that means even when it's burned unsafely. So um, it, it is important on when you're wick testing to to be brutal too and yes it takes two batches for me um to test test wicks uh so <laughs> wick testing is not inexpensive candle testing it's not always just the wick so after i've got the right wick then i'm testing it even more um to make sure that it's it's safe to, ooh, to see how wonderful my hot throw is um because and maybe I need to wick up, maybe I need to wick down, but it's important to create a safe candle. So, um, the, I hope this helps. Um, it's, it, this information is essentially for all candles, all waxes, all containers. But, um, uh, if you have questions for, uh, specifically for soy wax, those are the, the wax, that's the wax I use the most and the CDs and the eco wicks are the wicks I, I highly recommend for for your soy waxes. That's 464 or 444. So um, <clears throat> I hope this has been helpful. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Uh, if you use a different wax from soy, I, I may not be able to help you, I'll be honest, because I do not um, test other waxes. I only use 464 and 444. I have used 415. But um, I'm more than glad to help anybody that has questions. Y'all message me all the time. <laughs> you can uh, answer, leave questions below. I will answer them to the best of my ability. And um, I will try to show you some of my wick test on this new little jar that I'm trying as well. So um, I hope this helped. And I hope I, I didn't speak too fast. But um, yeah, please feel free to ask me questions. Um, there's a possibility I did not cover everything. Uh, I just had a kind of an outline of notes that I wanted to, to cover for it. But um, I, I love helping. But you know what I love more is to know that y'all are making safe candles. Um, because honestly, there is some stuff on YouTube that I shake my head at. And I'm going, they're going to burn somebody's house down. They're teaching other people how to burn somebody's house down. And that, that scares me. Um, I know I'm not calling any names, but there are some reputable um, candle makers that I highly recommend. You can check out um, check out uh, Jeff Stanley um, of um, I'm fixing to give the wrong name Stanley Handcrafted. Uh, I recommend any of his videos. Uh, Jeff's been doing this long enough, and he has tested long enough to know what he's doing, and he gives solid advice. Uh, Wade Thomas gives solid advice. He's been in this and he's doing it long enough and he's tested enough and he's burned enough candles just by, by burning other people's candles too to um, to review them. But Je uh, uh, Wade knows what he's talking about. I, I, um, I, 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 can't, I won't recommend anybody <laughs> other than those two. I hope you find that, that what I am sharing with you is, is solid, helpful information. Um, if not, let me know. Um, but uh, I appreciate you watching the video and I really hope this helps and like I said I am Kathy with Kathy's Candle Creations and you can find me at Simply Soy and many other groups um, I love to help and if I can help you if I if I know how to help you I'll be more than glad to so y'all do like all the everybody else does if this was helpful and please like and subscribe and y'all have a wonderful day 
Thanks so much. Bye.